Hola a todos, bienvenidos. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I gained confidence through my journey of learning fluent Spanish. Those two things are very intertwined for me. With more confidence, I felt like I could speak more Spanish. As I practiced more and became more comfortable speaking Spanish, I just felt more comfortable and confident in general. And I want to thank Tomas, my husband, because since I met him, he's been encouraging me encouraging me. He's constantly encouraging me out of my comfort zone, pushing me to speak Spanish more and just doing things that I wouldn't have done before. Soy Darlene, aka Dars, a Spanglish speaking mama and on this channel we speak Spanglish all about Nicaragua and life as a bicultural family. If you're interested in this type of content, consider subscribing and let's get into the video. I don't know what that was. Okay. In this video, I'm going to go over like four different parts. And the first is a little bit of background, of course. Second is my first big leap. <laughs> the third is little changes over time. And last is where I am now. So this whole process, of course, did not happen overnight. I started learning Spanish when I was in second grade 16 years ago. I'm not old, but that makes me feel old when I can say 16 years ago. So maybe at that time I was innocent enough to not worry about the people around me of when I practiced Spanish or, you know, I don't even know if I did. I don't remember whether or not I practiced outside of school. I took Spanish every year throughout school and then ninth grade, which is my first year of high school, I did in the public school, but then my next and final three years of high school, I did online. And I think that was partly because I was just too darn shy to be in big bad high school. All right, I guess she's going to sleep and uh, I hope hopefully don't wake her up. <laughs> So soon after graduating high school, my sister-in-law was planning a trip to Nicaragua. Mi cuñada me invitó, but she also said, I asked you and two of your sisters, so whoever says yes first gets to go. Well, after much thinking that I was going to say no, I said yes. One of the very big reasons I said yes was because I really wanted to practice Spanish. I wanted to be around people who actually spoke Spanish, but I didn't practice, maybe a tad. Not very much at all. Since I was so shy, anything that made me even slightly uncomfortable made me kind of shut down. Therefore, not having practiced Spanish with people who actually knew Spanish, well, you can imagine I would have felt very uncomfortable. And even more shut down. I couldn't speak Spanish. I knew it so well by the book. I could read it, I could write it, I could answer questions about it, I could ace an exam about it. My grammar was on point. I knew everything about Spanish except how to actually speak it and comprehend other people speaking it. I had no listening practice. I would listen to songs in Spanish, but that's not conversational. It helps to a point, but I needed more than that in my ninth grade Spanish teacher. Let me just give you a little bit of insight into how super darn shy I was, okay? I turned so red in the face when I got nervous and still happens a little bit to this day, but not nearly as much as it used to, thank goodness. But that just created this vicious cycle of trying to say something, turning red, shutting me down, me not wanting to talk anymore because I was afraid of that red face coming through, I guess. <laughs> I used to help my dad with his fishing charters where he would take some clients out for fishing. I would just do whatever he needed. And sometimes I would barely say a word to the clients on the entire eight hours or more of the trip. I was so shy. I'm not saying I'm 100% over it, but I am so much better than I was before. We'll talk a little bit more about the changes, but I also wanna say that my personality type is the type that likes to put other people before herself. I would always do things based on other people's needs or desires or the things that other people would tell me I should do. I would do something if it meant that it would help somebody with something. So I did go with my sister-in-law that first time. We met this family and they invited me to stay at their house because the mother of the family, which is now my friend, also wanted to work on her English speaking skills. So it was gonna be a two-way win-win. She would work on her English, I would work on my Spanish. So maybe to you it might sound like, oh wow, such a big brave decision going to Nicaragua by herself. But to me, it did not feel that way. It was honestly because of the needs and desires of the people around me. And as I've gained more confidence in myself and my decisions, I am not nearly as influenced by that, but that's how it happened. Not that I regret it in the slightest because look what I got out of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. And the husband, don't forget about the husband. <laughs> Alright, 
fast forward and I talked about all that in the story of how Tomas and I met. You can check that out here. But Tomas and I started texting, of course in Spanish because he didn't speak English. And I felt like this was a little bit different from just like writing in Spanish for myself or doing school homework because this was a real life person who actually spoke Spanish, knew Spanish and would use like actual Nicaraguan slang in text messages. So I started gaining confidence, learning new words, just a little bit, little tiny, little tiny shifts. And I started doing a little more outside of my comfort zone. Me and him went out a couple times. We went out with his brother and another friend and I met some of his other friends and I tried to talk to people at volleyball practice and just little things I started doing that were completely uncomfortable for me, but I did them. Went back to the US, started video chatting with Tomas and he was so, so, so patient with my Spanish struggle. He didn't say anything at the time, but later on he told me that his friends would laugh at him and make fun of him for how slow he spoke with me. Because normally he speaks so fast in Spanish, but he had to speak slow and enunciate every word whenever he was talking to me and sometimes repeat once or twice or three times or four times or more. So over the next couple years, I've visited Nicaragua many times and I always leaned on Tomas to help me communicate with other people or I would ask him to order at the restaurant, have him make phone calls because I was too uncomfortable to speak to people in Spanish over the phone. It's different over the phone than in person, let me tell you. But Tomas started pushing me to do things on my own. I started making phone calls on my own. I would talk to his mom a little more. <laughs> he would urge me to actually hold conversations with people when we were in a group of friends and not just sit by him silently. Él siempre habla with people like taxi drivers or holds a conversation at the checkout when he's buying his groceries. Just recently we went to get a mattress. We got it off of Facebook Marketplace and when we went to pick up the mattress, of course he got to know the whole life story of the guy who was getting the mattress from. <laughs> I never thought that I could get to that point. Well, maybe a little bit, like deep, deep down. I was like, I'm gonna do what he does. <laughs> and I honestly never thought that the little random things that I did would help bring me towards that kind of a vague dream of actually being able to hold a conversation with a stranger without feeling super uncomfortable, uncomfortable. I just didn't really feel like I was changing over time, but I was pushing and inching just bit by bit that comfort zone slightly bigger and slightly bigger. Now that I think of it actually, I think maybe talking to the camera has really helped with that. Even though I'm just talking to an inanimate, inanimate object. And nobody's actually responding to me so I don't have to like worry about what they're gonna respond and what I'm gonna respond after that, but. Speaking of which, you can respond in the comments. Let me know in the comments what has helped you feel a little bit, just a little bit more confident over time. It doesn't matter where you are on your journey. I wanna put some names to those little numbers that are by the subscribe button that says 500 subscribers. <laughs> Thank you. If you have never commented before, comment. Oh, guys. <laughs>did a rental car. I called and said, hey, can you come pick me up at my house so I can get my rental car? So they have a driver that comes, picks you up, and brings you to the rental place. And then also had one of their drivers bring me back to my house. And I was chatting it up with the one that brought me to the place and the one that brought me back home. I was asking them about what's the area like because we haven't been here very long. Is it really hard winter? Does it get cold? You get lots of snow and where's places you recommend to go? And you know, having a conversation. And I was telling Tomas about this person said this and that person said that and he's like, my wife? You talk to them? Oh, that's when I really realized, I was like, wow, I have come a long way. Go me. Maybe next time I'm on an airplane, I'll actually hold a conversation with the person sitting next to me and actually get to know their life story by the time we get touched down in the next destination. Kind of freaks me out, just a little. It really is something I hope to be able to do one day. But you know, that thing about the rental car, it was like, we're new in this area, this person lives and works here, like they probably know something and I wanted to know something. So it didn't feel like that courageous or anything. Anyway, it happened. Yo creo que 
If I was a little bit less shy all around, I could have learned Spanish so much quicker. Because feeling confidence means like that little voice in your head isn't saying, oh, what are they gonna say next? And what if I respond wrong? And what if they don't understand me? And on and on and on. It means if something goes terribly wrong, it won't matter in the long run. So I think that if you just work on improving your confidence in general by just doing little tiny things outside of your comfort zone, you will in turn feel much more comfortable speaking Spanish. And I mean literally cualquier cosa because your comfort zone is stretched over all of these little things that you feel comfortable doing. Things that you're used to and have no problems with. So brush your teeth with your opposite hand or go to a different grocery store than you normally do and go to where the actual human is checking your items. Not... <laughs> what's the word? <laughs> Don't go through the self-checkout. Go to a different restaurant. Get a different meal than you're used to. Eat at a restaurant by yourself. It is seriously the little things that make a big change over time. Go try it. And of course, you gotta make it fun. If you're having fun, and this applies to anything in life, si estás disfrutando, you just get a lot further faster. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the thumbs up if you did. I hope you learned something. Comment down below if you did. And remember, if you hit that like or the dislike, comment, hit the subscribe button. All of those little things really help me in the growth of my channel. Gracias por ver. I'll see you next Saturday. Bye. As I practiced more and became more comfortable speaking, Goodbye.